Welcome to The Cap, where we are here to speak with college reps and other professionals in the field of college admissions to help answer all your questions and guide you through every step of the process. So if you're serious about college admissions, you've come to the right place. Are you ready? Let's talk about it. And now, here's your host, Dr. John Durante. Welcome to The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your host, John Durante, and I am here to introduce you to college admissions representatives and other professionals in the field of college admissions. Our purpose is to serve you, the students and parents, so that you may gain insight straight from the people who ultimately make the decisions. Regardless of whether you apply to a particular school being highlighted in a given episode, you should listen to all of them, as each guest will give you tremendous insight and advice on every aspect of the college admissions process, prompting you to come up with your own follow-up questions for when you visit campus or meet with a college admissions representative yourself. Don't forget to visit our website, www.collegeadmissionstalk.com, or the show notes of each episode to access the alphabetical list of all the colleges available with the related audio link to the right of each school. The alphabetical list provides you with on-demand access to all of the episodes so that you may listen whenever you wish. And if you want to receive links to episodes before they are released on the podcast, along with other related resources, please fill out the email opt-in form also available on our website and in the show notes of each episode. Lastly, please email me with any questions or comments at collegeadmissionstalk at gmail.com. So are you ready? Let's talk about it. Welcome to The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. I am your host, John Durante, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you today Christian Brady, who is the Dean of the University of Kentucky's Lewis Honors College. Now, we had Kara Frankie on the podcast back in episode 46 to talk specifically about the University of Kentucky. But today we have the great pleasure of having Dean Brady, who is going to talk about the Lewis Honors College. Dean Brady, thank you so much for being here today. How are you? I am well. Uh, thank you very much, John, for having me. It's wonderful to be here and to get a chance to talk about honors colleges and programs, and particularly our Lewis Honors College at the University of Kentucky. Well, it's an honor and pleasure not only to have you, Dean Brady, but also because this is the first episode where we're going to be highlighting not only the Lewis Honors College, but Honors Colleges in general. So, Dean Brady, let's start by me simply asking you to tell us about yourself. How long have you been in admissions and how did you end up in such a position? Well, it's um, I've been working with admissions, uh, golly, for about 20 some years now. Uh, I started out as a regular old academic. My field, in spite of my name, Christian Brady, is actually in rabbinic Judaism. And so I started at Tulane University in 1997 as an uh, assistant professor of Jewish studies and directing the Jewish studies program. Um, The year I made tenure, I was asked to become the director of the honors program at Tulane University. And honors programs work hand in glove with uh, recruitment at universities. It's an important part of uh, the student collegiate experience. Uh, And in 2006, I became dean of the Schreier Honors College at Penn State University. I was dean there for 10 years. Uh, And then I was brought on to the planning board for the Lewis Honors College here at Kentucky after uh, Tom Lewis and Jan Lewis gave their really generous gift to start up a new honors college at UK. And I came on board as the inaugural dean in 2017. Well, my understanding is that the honors program has been in existence since 1958. However, it was in 2015 that, as you said, Tom and Jan Lewis donated the biggest gift to the University of Kentucky, and therefore the Lewis Honors College was born. So can you provide us, Dean Brady, an overview of the academic programs and unique opportunities that the University of Kentucky's Lewis Honors College offers to its students, and what sets it apart from others honors colleges? Absolutely. Well, honors colleges and programs really started in in the United States is practically only here and at state universities like the University of Kentucky. And as you know, we've had an honors program here at UK for decades, uh, but they were smaller um, and tended to be within particular disciplines or just the first two years worth of instruction. And um, when Tom Lewis wanted to make a lasting impact on the University of Kentucky, he looked around and he saw other state universities and the kind of impact that 
honors colleges were having to keep the best and brightest in the states, which is the one of the key elements of an honors college at a state university, at a flagship. And he wanted to bring that to the University of Kentucky and to make it possible for us to go from about 50 or 75 students uh, in each freshman class in honors to 10% of the overall class. So right now, for example, we bring in about 700 students, 10% of our incoming freshman class, and um, really have a significant impact um, across all disciplines uh, for the University of Kentucky and the Commonwealth of Kentucky. We, of course, serve and are happy to have students from around the country and around the world. The Lewis Honors College itself, um, well, it was such a great privilege to start a college from scratch, especially having had uh, about a uh, over a decade of experience in honors and having reviewed a number of different honors colleges and programs, we were able to bring what I'd learned uh, to, to bear to try and create um, really a model for honors at the University of Kentucky. So we have, as do most honors colleges, uh, an honors curriculum, which is not credits placed on top of what a student would take, but rather their honors versions of their courses that they take as they move along. But with an entering foundation course, in our case, our course is called the Knowledge and Society. And all of our students have to take that in their first year in the honors college. And it's to help them see how knowledge comes from all sorts of different disciplines. Uh, the COVID crisis is a great way to enter into this, uh, this uh, problem or to, to demonstrate we needed scientists, we needed uh, political scientists, we needed people engaged in community outreach uh, and so on to, to look at, okay, how's, how does this big problem work? How do we disseminate knowledge in those contexts? So at their very first year, our curriculum, we wanna give them that breadth and then as they move through, the, whether they are engineering students or history majors or nursing students, they will then take their normal curriculum, but with honors versions available for them for most of all their other classes. And in particular, uh, a, a commitment to research. All of our students, their, their honors curriculum culminates with an honors thesis or project. So if you're a fine arts student, you might be doing a performance that would then have a piece written up to go along with it. So we have that honors curriculum that's very common for most honors colleges uh, across the country. But we have five honors advisors dedicated within the honors college. So all of our students have an advisor in their academic home and in the honors college. We also have our truly unique Center for Personal Development. And there we have uh, five personal counselors. And they really are to help our students across the spectrum of experiences. So in their first year, they may be saying, well, I really want to go into medicine, but I'm not sure about major. I'm not even sure whether it's to be a physician or maybe go into public policy. And our personal counselors can help them through various assessment tools like um, uh, the DISC assessment and things of that nature to get a sense of what's their personality, what are their passions and their interests. But those same counselors will work with them to get internships, work with them on interview skills, writing their CVs. And so this Center for Personal Development really is quite unique and, um, well, not quite unique, that's redundant. It is unique. Nobody else has it. <laughs> and it stays with our students all the way through. And that is a significant advantage. Then we have our honors residential experience. We have four residential halls set aside, two of which are 100% are dedicated to our honors students. We have particular pathways depending on majors that can allow a combination between business and engineering, for example. Uh, being a land grant institution, it's really important that we have porous borders in terms of allowing opportunities for students to come in. So we have upper level admissions for students to come in, maybe they don't think about it their freshman year, or um, they hit their stride only once they come to college. So great, we want them to apply. They can apply with as, as long as they have at least four semesters left before graduation. We've got an early assurance program with our College of Medicine here. And then the last thing that I would mention, uh, John, I know if I go on and on, there's so much to talk about, but we are really building because we're just in our um, really our, our seventh going into our seventh year here. We're building leadership opportunities and leadership programs. It's a part of our mission uh, to develop leaders with integrity 
And while that's not required of all of our honor students, we are providing and building out a number of really unique uh, and uh, distinctive leadership programs in partnership across the university. Well, that's a terrific overview. And I know that you take a multidisciplinary approach to your program. You mentioned that course, Knowledge in Society, which I'm sure touches upon many different academic subject areas. You talked about the counselors that help students with internship, with interview skills, writing a CV, just to mention a few things. Also, the honors residence experience. And you touched upon the mission, which is building leadership with integrity. So, Dean Brady, what else can you tell us about the philosophy or mission of the Lewis Honors College? And how does it align with the broader goals of the University of Kentucky? Absolutely. Our mission is to better the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the world by helping students explore their purpose, develop intellectually, and lead with integrity. And our Honors College, like most, um, are here to enhance uh, the strengths of the University of Kentucky. Uh, you know, we're here to, to enhance the university that we're a part of. We are a public land grant university. And we're dedicated to improving people's lives through excellence in education, research, creative work, and service in the health industry. And so you find all of that throughout what we're doing in honors. And what makes us so strong is not only the dedicated honors faculty we have within the honors college. We are one of only eight honors colleges that has a dozen uh, or more faculty within the college. We have hundreds of faculty throughout the university in every discipline who uh, teach for honors and supervise our honors students. And so we are seeking to support the land grant mission that we have uh, by bettering our commonwealth through this. Honors colleges often are seen as focused uh, primarily on academics and grades and just the, the best and brightest students. And of course, our students are tremendous, but there are great students uh, at the University of Kentucky who may not want to be in the honors college and that's fine. We are providing deeper and broader experiences for our students here in honors. And so you'll often find a student who might be double majoring between something like a language and chemical engineering. They might have incredibly disparate uh, backgrounds or interests, but they come together in that one student. And then we as an honors college work hard to help them bring a curriculum together that enables them to uh, strive and achieve within those disparate fields uh, and succeed. Well, clearly you're more than just academics and grades while offering many, many benefits as you've touched upon. So Dean Brady, what would you say to that student who's coming to the University of Kentucky, but they're on the fence on whether or not they should join the Lewis Honors College? What would you say to that student? You have nothing to lose. <laughs> that, that is that is the conversation I have. And, and we often have this conversation because uh, I absolutely understand the students who um, they feel enough anxiety coming to college for the first time and they worry that perhaps it's going to place additional pressure. The, the truth is it's actually the opposite. We have significant additional support structures. University of Kentucky has tremendous student success programs and supports for our students within the academic units as well. Um, and then our honor students get all of the honors college on top of that. Come in, taste and see, try it out. Um, be a part of the college, uh, apply, and, and if you get in, please come join us, take advantage of all of these opportunities for advice and counsel and support. And if students don't get in the first year, we encourage them to come to UK anyway, because we're built upon uh, really what is a tremendous university, unfortunately, not always recognized for its academic excellence, but it is here. And then perhaps join the Honors College later, if that works out for you. Um, but it, it really, it, you know, that, that first instinct often is, oh, it's going to put too much pressure. The reality is we build so much support around that um, I think it actually does the opposite. It helps to alleviate that pressure, provides a home on campus for our students, literally and metaphorically. Um, so give it a try. That's what college is about, coming and trying out these different things. Well, that's great insight. And of course, the Honors College offers so many additional supports. So, Dean Brady, what else can you share about the type of students who thrive in the Honors College environment? And what characteristics or qualities do you look for in prospective students? Well, thank you. There are two very different questions in a way. Um, you know, as, as you're focused on admissions here, and you know, 
from personal experience, both as a student, as well as a parent and an administrator, <laughs> we, we never quite know when we're ad admitting students. So to take your second question first, we're looking for a student who does have academic aptitude, right? We, we want to see that they have taken the most challenging academic curriculum available to them at their high school, but we're going to pay attention to that high school. So if they come from a rural county and they don't have, or an urban county, and don't have the resources of, say, a private school or a, a wealthier tax district, um, that's not their fault. That's not the fault of the student. But did they challenge themselves? Did they take advantage of everything that they had? Because that's the kind of student that thrives, is the one who is seeking out opportunities to grow and to expand and to challenge themselves. So in our admissions process, it's highly holistic. It, it, we, so we look at that curriculum. We want to see that, it's, um, that they've been successful there. We don't take into account test scores, never have. Um, and then our essays, we have a couple of essays, but the one specific one for honors is very general. So to give you an example, this year, we started with the definition of a commonwealth. There are only four states in the union that are commonwealths. Uh, and it means for the common good. So we asked the students to share, and we're very public and direct about um, what it is we're looking for in those essays. How do you define the common good? What do you see as your contribution going forward? All of your life experience, past and future that you hope to have, how does that contribute together to the, the common good? And we're just trying to get to know the student. Who are you? What is your passion and, and vision? Where are the places you want to go? Knowing full well, if they're like me, within about six weeks of their freshman year, they might change majors completely. Most of them, fortunately, are not like me. I did so poorly. Uh, I was asked to take a year's leave of absence between my freshman and sophomore year. But that's another oh. story, even though it does motivate the work I do. So that's really we're looking for the student who is you know they have to they have to have academic aptitude there's no question about it they're going to be some of the, the very top students in their high schools but we also want to see that they're challenging themselves that they're willing to think uh, across disciplines that they're willing to think uh, across town right that they are um seeing what the the varieties uh, and exper different experiences that others in the world are having and can be empathetic and aware of of the world around them. Again, we want to. Our mission is to better the Commonwealth of Kentucky and the world through these students and having that impact. So we're looking for that that enthusiasm, that that risk taking intellectually and and personally. Well, I appreciate the fact that you talked about that you don't look at test scores, so there's no test scores in your overall application review process, but you talked about the essay, especially that specific one for the Honors College, where you talked about wanting to know, how do you define the common good? How do you intend to contribute students? Talk about your passion, your vision. In other words, they're trying to see what you've done, I guess, in high school, so that they can help determine the type of citizen, the type of classmate, the type of roommate you're gonna be once you're in that Honors College. Would you say that's correct, Dean Brady? That's absolutely correct. You know, we could we could simply create a set GPA score and and tie it to a test score and just say, okay, we're going to just take those students numerically. But that doesn't get at the breadth and depth of the kind of students and experience that we want to build within the Honors College and at the University of Kentucky. So we, you know, the, my my simple but very direct advice to students as they're look, working on the essay is tell us about you. That is the most unique thing you can do because it's you. That's what we want to know, not a canned definition, um, not AI generated responses. <laughs> Tell us about you, your life, your experience. And so all over each year we change our questions, but each time we're doing something to try and get at their worldview, their personal experience um, and the kind of impact that they would like to make. Recognizing we're all starting as 17, 18 year olds, even occasionally a 15 year old. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of living to be done. Absolutely. And Dean Brady, can you speak to the percentage of students who come from out of state? And does the application process differ for your in-state and out-of-state students? The application process is the same. Uh, it, it's absolutely the same for in-state and out-of-state. 
we tend to break down uh, by the time uh, everything settles out to about uh, a little over 20% out of state and about uh, 80% in state in terms of, of honors college uh, ratios. We are welcoming and, and want students from, uh, from around the country and the world. We have a small number of international students, but they tend to be incredibly engaged. And so they really help to enhance the experience of all of our students. Um, and at the same time, we explicitly, uh, as our president likes to say, our doors are open widest to our residents of Kentucky. And so we're, we're working hard to, to have that sort of impact there. We've not yet gotten to a point where we have to worry too much about uh, our ratios. We're just out there recruiting the best uh, students who want to be with us. I'm just uh, looking for the best of the best, and we appreciate that. And of course, for many families, financial considerations are important. What scholarship and financial aid opportunities does the Lewis Honors College provide its prospective students? Now, this is an area where we show our youth. We are a young college, and um, Mr. Lewis was incredibly generous with his founding gifts, and it's gone into the sort of founding infrastructure, building up our, our 12 lectures that we have and so forth. We are still, and when I say we, I mean me and our officer of philanthropy, <laughs> working hard to uh, build up and develop additional honors-specific scholarship funds. But there are always uh, at least 8 million, and I think we're close to 13 million right now, uh, of scholarship commitments to honors students, students in the Honors College. Every Honors College student receives at least some scholarship money. Usually our, uh, our, our baseline has been $1,000. Um, but most of our Honors College students are receiving something more, more substantial. But those scholarships come through the central office. They're not scholarships that we control within Honors. Um, we just go through, and if anybody at the end of the day doesn't already have something like, uh, our Singletary is our biggest and fullest scholarship that goes to 25 incoming students or provost or presidential. If they don't already have something, we go through and make sure every student gets at least some, uh, a thousand dollars scholarship per annum. Well, we appreciate that. And I'll always put the Office of Admissions in the show notes. Dean Brady, if there's anything else that you want me to include, just send it to me. And of course, we'll make it available to the students and their parents. So what else sets apart a successful application to the Lewis Honors College? And Dean Brady, are there any specific qualities or other experiences that you value in your applicants? We absolutely are looking for students who have been engaged in leadership. And I want to be clear, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the top of, of they don't have to be president of their 4-H club. They don't have to be um, you know, president of LEOs. But to be engaged in those kind of organizations, um, to be uh, initiating programs and, and opportunities, service opportunities in their communities, so leadership and service are, are absolutely components that we look for uh, in our application. And um, we, we want to see that kind of community engagement. It's not that the, as I like to say, it's not that we don't want the lab rat or the bookworm. Those are important <laughs> students too. Uh, and, and their strengths show as well. But there are students whose grades are you know, not the absolute pristine perfect 4.0 or straight A's, however you're measuring it because they're also engaged in the community. They're also doing other things. And we want to see that captured. So we look for that, that leadership and service as well. Well, we appreciate that, Dean Brady. And can you share for our listeners the average profile of the current Honors College freshman class? I know you mentioned that you don't look at test scores, but anything that you could include, GPA, if in fact you do see the SAT, ACT scores, and any other relevant data. And for students falling below that mid-range, what can they do to strengthen their overall application? Absolutely. And I, I appreciate the chance to come back because I want to comment. Sometimes folks will look at our annual reports and they'll see AT, ACT scores reported. We report those after the fact, but as I said, we don't take them into account. Uh, in our current uh, 2023 um, applicant pool, um, it was an ACT of 30. Um, and the, the cumulative unweighted high school GPA was a 3.93. So again, it gives you the sense, uh, I hope that, you know, these are obviously very smart students. Uh, they're good students, but it's not perfection that, that we're looking for on that as, as much as it is the full, well-rounded and engaged students. They've got to be challenging themselves. And that's one of the important things 
to recognize is some of, you know, some of the best students are going to challenge themselves. And that means that they're not always going to be, uh, you know, getting 100% on the tests. One of the things that um, fra- my favorite phrases is that we have to fail well. We have to learn, even if failure in some contexts for students might be a B, that, that that's okay, that there's so much we can learn from in life when we um, take risks and we go out and do it. And then that's where our advisors come in to help them say, okay, good. So maybe this semester you'll take that one course that's really outside your comfort zone, but you want to give yourself a buffer. So let's build your schedule in such a way that it allows you to, um, to take those risks, but, but still be on track. Similarly with study abroad, we don't need to see that, that our applicants have had international experience and everything else because so many of our students, over 15% are first generation, right? They're coming from backgrounds that would not have given them that kind of opportunity. But within the Honors College, we want to give them those opportunities. And so um, we want to uh, help them schedule and, and make their plans accordingly. Well, we appreciate that. And I love how you're talking about failing well. Obviously, there's a lot to learn. Not everybody is perfect. If you get knocked down seven times, get up eight times, as they say, right? <laughs> so absolutely, we appreciate that. And Dean Brady, how does the Lewis Honors College approach the review of applications from students attending high schools with varying academic offerings, including differences in available advanced placement courses? In other words, how do you review an applicant from a school that offers 30 AP courses while another student's school may only offer five? How does the application review process differ for those two types of students? We are very fortunate, John, that we have tremendous reviewers of our applications. They have a lot of experience, not just in higher education admissions, but in K through 12 as well. And uh, those uh, folks who review the transcripts uh, know, get to know them well. They get to know those schools well and understand the curriculum that's available and on offer for the students. And they will look to see the strength of schedule. Uh, if a student did have lots of AP credits uh, courses available to them, we want to see and get a sense of what they're taking, what they're challenging themselves with. I will tell you, we're still in our early stages. Uh, as I said, we're a young college. Um, eventually, I hope to get to the point where we can make it really clear if you're a humanities student and you've taken all the AP history and A push and European and you didn't take AP Chem and AP Bio, but that's not your strength. We want to be able to find a way to, to take that into account, too. We're not there yet, John, but I think that's really important um, because one of the things I tell honor students as they come in there during their orientation, something we call Lewis launch, get them launched in a <laughs> strong way. As I say, you guys were honor students in high school. You probably took honors everything across all the disciplines. Well, right. now, if you're going to be a math major, you're going to be honors in math. And you may not be able to do as well in honors English, or usually, frankly, it goes the other direction. Those of us who do well in <laughs> honors history probably are not going to do so well in honors chemistry. Um, but it, it really is helping our students to find where they're not just their their interests, but their talents lie, and going as far as they as they possibly can there. So we're we're looking to start trying to match that up on the high school end. We're not quite there yet, but we're trying to really take each application of a student, student by student, looking at their high school, seeing what's on offer there. Did you challenge yourself? We have a lot of dual uh, enrollment here in the universe uh, in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, students taking college level courses. We want to take that into account and see what they've uh, availed themselves of and um, taking folding all of that then into this broader holistic assessment with the leadership and service, with their uh, essays. So the full picture, that's what we're trying to see. Well, we appreciate that. And, you know, you keep emphasizing leadership, but you also spoke about How did they challenge themselves based on the work that was available in their high school? Because essentially you're looking at two main themes. Number one, can they handle the work in the Lewis Honors College? And number two, what kind of community member are they going to be? And how are they going to contribute to this great thing that we call the Lewis Honors College? Would you agree with that, Dean Brady? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate that. And Are there specific ways that students could demonstrate their genuine interest in attending or being accepted into the Lewis Honors College during their application process? 
And is that taken into account during your overall review? Yes, I think one specific way, John, that students can show their interest in who we are, as opposed to wanting to garner yet another accolade, right? These are all very successful students, is look at our mission. Because we are not, as I said, just about the academic success. It's not, it, it, it should not just be about um, priority registration, although honor students have that. We want them to, um, to really be a part of the ethos in the community that we have. And so to that end, if they are, uh, they should look and review our mission uh, and our vision, uh, although the vision really is more about the institution that we want to be a leader in honors education. But that mission is our commitment to our current students. And I would hope that a student would look at that and say, hey, I want to be a part of that community that's not only going to help me grow intellectually, but is really going to help me cultivate myself as, as a leader to develop my personal um, perp- sense of purpose and intellect and, and grow. And so I think in terms of applications, uh, a student should, should really cogitate on our mission and reflect, okay, how do I see myself getting in there? Take a look at our website, which uh, our, our director of communication, Adrian Clark, just launched our new re- redesigned website. Take a look at all the different offerings and opportunities that we have. Uh, We bring speakers in every single week into the Scholars Lounge to meet with our students, to talk with them. Reflect back to us what it is that you're seeing in the Lewis Honors College activities and opportunities, study abroad, internships, how you see yourself within that community. Well, I think that's great. I love how you talked about looking at your mission I'm going to talk about the essay you brought up specific to the Honors College. My guess is that you want students to really talk about why they want to be in that community, in your community at the Lewis Honors College. Is it a program? Is it a major? And how do they plan on contributing? In other words, anything students that you can do to stand out, to demonstrate your understanding of the great programs that the Lewis Honors College offers, how you see yourself contributing, why you see yourself specifically there in that program. Would you agree with that, Dean Brady? Absolutely. And I would say also at the University of Kentucky. I mean, there are some really tremendous and, and unique opportunities that are that present themselves here. We're only, we're the eighth of eight universities uh, in the country that have every single discipline and professional school on one campus. Um, that creates opportunities in, in you know, they'll, it'll be the similar skills when it comes to job applications or grad school applications. Why is UK the place that you ought to be? Why is the Lewis Honors College the opportunity that you want to be a part of to thrive within? And again, we recognize we're not looking for some perfection in an essay and so forth um, because, you know, we're young, we're, we're 16, 17 year old students writing these essays. So, so sincerity, um, yet with some good studiousness, you know, really paying attention to who it is you're applying for. Uh, it's easy today with the common app and everything else to crank out a bunch of standard essays, uh, and, and just roll them out there. Uh, and that's fine. There's, there's real value in that. But that's why we have a separate essay for honors. That's why we have these opportunities all year long for students and their families to come and be on campus, to take a look around, to meet with our honors students, uh, to correspond with them, to really see, hey, can I see myself in that community? Well, I really appreciate you talking about that. Specific to the Lewis Honors College, you really shouldn't use a generic essay students You should do your research. If you could visit, it's so important to be on that campus so that you could see the community yourself. You could feel it. You could live it, even if it's just for a couple hours while you're visiting. And talk to your demonstrated, again, your demonstrated understanding of that program, why you want to be there. Again, is it a specific major or what is it about the Lewis Honors College that you want? And equally as important, How do you see yourself contributing to the great program that they have at the University of Kentucky? So, Dean Brady, this has been a phenomenal conversation. I truly appreciate it. But before we get to the last question, I just want to ask, is there a question I didn't ask you today or a topic that I didn't bring up that you'd like to share with us now? 
I think since we're talking directly to the students, John, this is what I would would say. You know, I've given you a sense of the Lewis Honors College and all the tremendous opportunities. So hit our website, honors.uky.edu, and take a look there. Uh, but as you were just saying to the students listening, y- you need to find the place that is the right fit for you, the place where you will thrive. And this is the this is the guidance and direction that I give to all of our uh, admissions and recruitment uh, personnel, both the staff and our student workers. Our job is to help the students who are prospective students who are looking at the University of Kentucky and looking at the Lewis Honors College, help them see themselves here, see the potential, see the possibility and the opportunity. And if they see, well, that's not quite for me, that's okay. I don't want us recruiting a student who comes here and then is not happy here because they really ought to be closer to home or in a smaller institution or something like that. We want to make sure it's the right fit for everybody. And we want to see them all succeed. And so that's my advice that I give to all students and their parents who are deeply engaged in the process. As you said, John, take the time to visit Uh, certainly visit the website and go through it as much as you can for all of these colleges and universities. Check out YouTube channels and videos and things. Um, But best of all, come visit us on campus and get the sense, okay, is this a place where I can thrive? Is this a place where I, you know, can can make some mistakes? Can, is there support going to be around me when I have a really, really bad chemistry midterm? Is there, are there going to be some people around to help me get back up and find the resources I need and move forward? And we've built our college with that goal. So we've got our academic advisors and personal counselors within the Honors College. We have tremendous student success services at the university for all of our students here at UK. Um, but at the end of the day, it's also just about fit. Now, personally, John, I absolutely love it here in Lexington at the University of Kentucky. (laughs) I think it's the right combination of both uh, a a large city and yet it's very rural in our setting. Um, And our university is just the right fit of every discipline you really could want is available here, certainly for our undergraduates. And yet we also have the support of that small college environment through the Honors College and through the other resources here at UK. So it's, it's a place I'm very, very proud to, to be a part of and to help build this brand new Honors College. Um, and at the end of the day, though, it is the people, of course, that make this college and this institution and our students are just tremendous. It's a great community to be a part of. Well, it sounds like an amazing community. And I'm glad that you spoke about fit because, again, in talking to the students, students, it's very important to keep in mind you need to find the right fit for yourself. There is at least one college. There's more than one college for every single student, but not every college is for every single student. So it's not about where your friend is going. You might want to look at things like what are the right supports? If, for example, you want to be in a rural area, yet there's a school that everyone is pushing you to go to that happens to be in an urban environment, well, that school might not be for you. So knowing what you want in a university is really important, and it may differ from where your friends are going or perhaps where you know family members are advising you to go. So it's very important to be reflective. And of course, as you said, to make sure that there's proper supports in place to help you to continue to be successful throughout your four years of college and beyond. So Dean Brady, this has been awesome. Unfortunately, it does bring us to the last question, which is, what are the top three pieces of advice you would give a student and parents who are considering the University of Kentucky's Lewis Honors College and are in the early stages of their college application process? Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure to be a, a, a part of this conversation here, and I'm always thrilled to be able to speak to students and their parents as, as they're in this process. Uh, three tips. Um, they're probably somewhat repetitive. I'll come back to saying take the time to do the research of the institution, um, not in an academic way, but really getting to know us. So come and visit, get onto our Instagram and Facebook pages. Um, Our student uh, workers are always happy to exchange emails, uh, our Honors College ambassadors, as we call them. Really get to know and make sure that this really is the place for you. You know, as mentioned before, it's a great combination of large and small. 
Uh, one of the things, for example, we have a number of Division I athletes who are in the Honors College. They're able to make that balance between the academics and the athletic success that can only come from an R1 and Division I institution like UK. But you have to make sure that that's the right, right thing for you. In this process, uh, folks, uh, parents, uh, students, there is no substitute ultimately for being present. Now, maybe depending on your, your circumstances, you might need to wait till later in the process, but don't ever skip it. You really need to find a way to, to get to campus to visit so that you can know, hey, this really is uh, where I want to be. It's not, it's, it's not too rural or too urban or it's urban enough or rural enough. It, it just, there's, there's no substitute for getting in to see it. Plus, we have amazing residence halls. So you really just need to come and say, <laughs> see. It's really kind of ridiculous how gorgeous they are. Um, and lastly, I would say that you need to find, make sure you find a place that is committed to your success. This is our theme, really. We have our mission, but our, our driving theme is the success of our students. And find that place. It's like a relationship, John, right? You and your partner have to be committed to one another and to seeing <laughs> each other succeed. Well, that's students, you need to find that for yourself in your college, uh, that it is someplace that truly is committed to you and seeing you succeed. Even though we have 2,200 students in the Lewis Honors College, every single one of them is a student that we want to succeed and we want to help uh, to see them thrive. Make sure you find that place for you. Well, Dean Brady, this has been a phenomenal conversation. Obviously, the University of Kentucky and the Lewis Honors College is so fortunate to have you as were we today on this podcast episode. I'm so happy as I know that this is going to help so many students and their parents as they navigate through the process. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it, Dean Brady. Thank you. It's my great pleasure. Well, it was our honor and pleasure. And to everyone out there, good luck with your college search. Take care, everyone, and best wishes. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Cap, the College Admissions Process Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please don't forget to tell a friend and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. I am your host, John Durante, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Cap.